I'll uh, stop the video just for now and then we'll start it once everyone joins. Hi everyone, thanks for joining early. We will be starting here in about three minutes. Thanks. For anyone who just joined, we're going to be starting in about two minutes. Thanks for joining early. Well, everyone, we will be starting here in about just about one minute. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Farnham. I am CTO with Set Solutions. Thank you for joining us on our Tech Thursday. Uh, for those of you, if this is your first time for our Tech Thursdays, uh, we are doing this. Um, this is actually an inside thing that we've done for a long time here at Set Solutions, uh, where we get um, updates on our different vendors and look at new vendors in the space, in different in the cybersecurity space, and in different areas of that space. And so what we're uh, starting to do is open this up uh, as kind of an inside view of what Set Solutions does to stay up to date so we can help our customers. And today we're joined by IronNet and they're gonna be talking um, about their solution and giving you a deep dive demo into that solution. Before we get started on that, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we have, uh, you should have received a gift card 
from uh, from us uh, to join this, and we uh, just has some appreciation and uh, for joining. If you did not get that gift card, please reach out to uh, Lauren Lynch. You should be getting email from her after this. And if you didn't get that gift card, please let her know, and she'll get that out to you. Also, there is a survey at the end that will be coming out. And if you answer that, you'll be entered into a drawing for another gift card. So please answer that survey and uh, give us your views of the Tech Thursday so we can make it better. We will also be taking questions during this. Uh, you can, uh, if you can, please use the Q&A panel. I know a lot of people naturally go to the chat, cha uh, chat panel, but uh, the q and I'll be looking at both with Q&A just makes it easier for us to track the questions. We'll be answering those at the end of the, um, of the demo uh, at the end of Tech Thursday today. So once again, thanks for joining us. And now I am gonna do a quick introduction of the IronNet team. So we've got Richard Bird, Vasanth Balakrishnan, and Phil Hillhouse is gonna be on as well. And uh, Vasanth, if you wanna take it off from here, then we'll get it started. Yeah, thank you. Thanks uh, to you, Michael, and everyone else at the Set Solutions team for giving us uh, a little bit of a, a chance to really talk about this concept of collective defense. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, turn it over. To, well, let's let's go. I'll just show briefly what we're going to talk about today. Um, so my colleague Richard Bird will uh, do brief intro and then you know, overview of IronNet, and then he'll turn it over to me, and I'll kind of walk you through what do we mean by collective defense, right? And a kind of before and after scenario. And then uh, we're going to get deep into a demo. And at that point, it's going to be interactive. Um, feel free to use the Q and A chat box or uh, that you see there on your screen. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll answer questions and, and talk through this technology. Richard. Thanks, Vasant. Uh, as Michael and Vasant mentioned, my name is Richard Bird. I am the Vice President of Critical Infrastructure Industries here at IronNet. And I'd like to share with you just briefly um, who we are and why we were founded. Uh, you'll see the slide that says the mis mission continues. Uh, that is a tagline that we take very seriously. So IronNet was formed uh, in 2014 by General Keith Alexander. Uh, many of you will know that uh, General Alexander was the longest standing director of the NSA. Uh, and during his tenure at the NSA, uh, he unified the Department of Defense's cyber capabilities uh, under one organization uh, called U.S. Cybercom. So he was the first commander of U.S. Cybercom. And one of the things that General Alexander noted uh, while he was serving in that capacity was that he had good visibility to what was going on within the DOD intelligence community and government uh, sphere. Um, and he could defend those environments very well. But where he had blind spots was in the private sector. Uh, the old saying, you can't defend what you can't see, rings true. And so the mission continues. That started when General Alexander retired from the NSA and from U.S. Cyber Command and founded IronNet in 2014 with the purpose of defending uh, the private uh, sector. Um, so what we do at the core of our company is called collective defense. Uh, it is the notion that when faced with sophisticated attacks from very skilled adversaries, we stand a much better chance uh, defending uh, in unison as opposed to uh, operating in siloed ventures. Uh, we do utilize network traffic analysis to power collective defense, but we also have other means to work with our behavioral-based analytics. So collective defense, again, is the idea that we can protect industries, supply chains, and nations by working together. And as General Alexander would say, collective defense is our collective responsibility. And we are filling the void where traditional sharing of intelligence has failed us as an organization. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it back to Vasanth real quick so that he can do a deep dive on this notion of collective defense. Thanks, Richard. So uh, we'll move to the next slide. So um, I'm going to walk through a scenario here. Uh, it's very typical. Um, and, you know, so what we see here is we basically, let's take this uh, scenario of four different companies. 
enterprise, which is, uh, you know, typically you, right? Um, that's, that could be your company. Let's talk about then a peer that may be in your industry. Um, we, we very intentionally put peer there instead of competitor because in the cyberspace, we think we should do a better job of collaborating rather than treating, um, you know, companies within the, the same industry as, as potential enemies or, or adversaries on the cyberspace. Uh, just with respect to de defending our sector, our individual companies, uh, nation, you know, our entire nation, and even, you know, allies, we should think about each other as peers, right? So there's, that's going to be another uh, peer in your, in your industry. The next is a supply chain partner. So every one of you works for companies that have supply chain partners. These are suppliers to you. Uh, or even, you know, maybe you are both in the same supply chain to a uh, downstream customer. And finally, a business partner could be some other affiliate. So the scenario today is that, you know, each company, they, tip, they handle cyber defense individually. There is no overarching organization that works together with that, right? There's minimum sharing and visibility outside of individual networks. Uh, I do acknowledge there are, you know, groups like the uh, ISACs, the InfraGuard, uh, those kind of organizations. And those are, we, we think those are absolutely necessary. Uh, but the sharing is typically ad hoc, um, not real time. There's, there's often a you know, latency of, uh, you know, days to weeks to hand, you know, share threat intel. And uh, the outcomes are really going to vary depending on uh, tools, personnel, skill levels, and often just plain luck. So we look at the first one, your own company, you might have seen there's, you know, at the top, there's a attack campaign, right? So let's, let's think about this as a nation state adversary, or increasingly what we're seeing today is even uh, criminal organizations that are, um, you know, trying to make money using uh, ransomware, uh, but they're increasingly using more sophisticated techniques. They're getting very, very good at this, which is their business of um, holding your data hostage uh, in order to extract, extract revenue. So the first company, you know, or your company gets detected, it's investigated for, a, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's investigated as the false negative, right? So uh, you think it looks like normal activity, but in fact, it was a part of the early stages of, an, uh, of a malicious attack. Your uh, peer in the enterprise may have not even seen it, depending on the tools that they have. Your supply chain partner, oh, you know, they, they have a, a pretty good security program, but maybe it's just because of a lot that some of uh, the attackers made a mistake and they were detected, it was investigated, remediated, uh, they weren't able to get a foothold in that organization. And then the business partner, um, they may have detected an attack, but they have, um, you know, uh, too many alerts, a very typical scenario, alert fatigue, and uh, something fired, but they just didn't have time to sift through that and, and see that uh, alert in the, in the sea of noise. Now, let's think about if you had a scenario where um, a capability where all the companies are working together in one collective platform, um, you know, we call that Iron Dome, but just think about it as a collective defense, real-time capability. So what would happen is same attack, right? The uh, detected behaviors are, uh, can, they, they can be detected in one or multiple organizations within that platform. Uh, but the behaviors are anonymized, right? Um, you know, only that information which is relevant uh, to the attack without revealing who, who was actually, you know, detecting it on the defender side, right? That could be anonymized and correlated with the other participants in this secure platform. Uh, this could be threat indicators. This could be an analyst triage rating and even SOC insights in terms of actual comments on individual alerts or, uh, you know, alerts that are correlated. Those can be automatically shared, right? So in this scenario, uh, your company detects it, you investigate it, and you remediate it. Uh, you know, and then the same thing can happen through the other companies over a period of these 10 days because they're all collaborating on this platform and they know now what to look for. And I'll, in, in, during the demo, you'll kind of see what that might look like and how you could separate those attacks that are correlated uh, with those that might just be, um, you know, only present in your environment. So uh, you kind of, you're probably wondering, okay, how exactly are you going to be able to pull this off, right? So our concept is that, you know, if we want to take this to, uh, you want a platform that's near real time or real time sharing of intelligence, clearly, you know, you have to go beyond just traditional threat intel sharing IOCs from each of the participants, right? There, there needs to be something that uh, essentially is an on-ramp into your, uh, in your collective defense architecture. So it needs to be the same type of technology present in, you know, each one of the participants. So we call this, you know, iron defense, right? Uh, this is a, uh, you know, primarily a cloud hosted platform where there will be a, a sensor in your environment 
Uh, and, and as Richard mentioned a few minutes ago, right, the, it's important to understand the sensor can collect uh, raw PCAP, right? It could actually sit on a span or a tap uh, on, a, on a segment of interest in your network, but it can also be a, a log forwarder. It can actually take logs from your environment that are network-based logs and send them to our analytics system in order to de detect, uh, you know, indicators of advanced attacks, behavioral analytics, um, uh, in addition to traditional, you know, PIR-based analytics, um, right? Uh, to, to detect uh, uh, advanced attacks, right? And so this would be deployed in parallel on multiple customers or multiple participants, like we say. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's a live platform. So over time, the more participants you add to the network, the more uh, through network effects, right? Just like social networks, they're not very useful at all with a few participants. The more people that you can get and more organizations that can participate, the more effective it becomes for everyone, right? So all of this data is coming in and it's collected uh, in the in the in the case of PCAP, we actually keep the PCAP on at the sensor level. So on site or in, in the cloud, if that sensor is monitoring cloud assets. Uh, but the, the key, the important thing to remember in terms of raw network traffic that, that doesn't actually get sent to the back end for performance and security reasons. We, we keep that locally so that it could be used on a per alert basis for triage. Right. So if you want to do any hunt on that raw PCAP, we can do that. But uh, the most important thing from analytics standpoint, we're setting metadata back to the back end. Um, that metadata, if you think about it, it's very similar to NetFlow. It's kind of like an enhanced NetFlow. And um, uh, you know, we, can, we can generate that based on packets or as I mentioned, logs as well. Uh, in fact, um, one of the use cases we have, if, if you have a customer, if you have already deployed, if you're starting to get into things like uh, Bro or Zeek type logs um, that, that are very actually rich contextual logs, generated based on your network traffic, we can actually ingest those and get very, very uh, uh, high fidelity analytics there. So the, the analytics are set fed to this level and we will you know, briefly review this in the demo, but what happens is we kind of, we have a two tiered system, right? So the analytics go into the, um, uh, into the uh, cloud backend and from there we have raw scoring. And then we set, set that to the second tier. And at this point, what we're doing is we're taking our own enrichment, right? So Cloud Connect is uh, just, uh, it's, it's our version of uh, uh, some uh, analytics, both open source and IronNet proprietary that we apply against the data. Uh, these are analytics uh, and threat intel sources that we are uh, licensed in a way that we can anonymously, that is without attributing, you know, the sources or, or uh, any, any uh, victims in the network, right? We can actually share that. We have a license to share that to all the participants. So basically the, what we enrich the data with, both open source and, uh, and proprietary, is is fed into what we call an expert system. And that's really the system that uh, weighs the, the analytics and really compares them and uses, uh, we basically have a data science team working with hunters that are that are tuning these analytics on a regular basis. But we look to uh, rate those, uh, you know, each alerts that are based on correlated events. And we'll, we'll go through that in the demo, but the idea is that you really want to try to uh, reduce the amount of false positives, uh, increase the amount of uh, uh, true positives in the, in the network. And then that generates prioritized events and alerts, and then we could send that to um, our analyst front end, we call the uh, user interface, IronView. Uh, but more importantly, we have the ability to integrate with uh, a lot of your existing SOC tools. So today we have a Splunk plugin. Um, we have actually two different plugins, one to forward logs uh, from, from existing Plunk. Splunk if you want to just consume our services and, and participate in the collective defense from a logs only standpoint. But we also have the SOC level platform uh, with Splunk. So we have an, in the Splunk app store, if you search IronNet, uh, you'll see that uh, we have an app, app in the Splunk store, which basically lets you do not, you know, 80 to 90% of the actions that you can do from an analyst standpoint in our main interface. You could do it through our Splunk pl plugin because it's two way, right? Uh, we also have a very similar integration with QRadar for the uh, other, for, you know, customers that have deployed that SIM tool. And then um, from a security orchestration response tool, uh, we have Demisto uh, swim lane phantom integrations that are available. Now, what I'd like to talk about here is that, you know, very, very common question from customers is they see the demo, they start talking to us, understand how it works. They're like, well, what if I, I'm paying for my own um, TIRs, right? Threat intelligence rules, or I have my own threat intelligence platform tip. Um, can I integrate that into your system? And, and how's that work? Well, because that may be commercial, uh, you have, you know, there, there's legal issues with us not being able to share something that our participants have, uh, you know, on a commercial basis purchased. Uh, we, we can't directly integrate that at this cloud connect level, 
But what you can certainly do is you could still take advantage of the whole idea of collective defense and those anonymized uh, alert, alerts are coming through and sent into a SOAR tool. At that point, the SOAR tool on your network would be the most sensible place to actually triage an alert. So we have an alert zero to a thousand, right? That comes into the system. Um, you may then take that alert based on what we see, which is primarily network traffic. You may then want to take that through your swim lane, for example, and then integrate that with your endpoint logs, uh, endpoint events such as um, uh, you know carbon black or um, uh, something like uh, CrowdStrike. And then you could say, okay, I saw some, uh, you know, command and control beaconing on a particular host in my network. Uh, I send that, that comes in as alert. Let's say IronNet rate, rates that alert as 900. It goes into your uh, swim lane. Uh, you also see it in Splunk to, you know, do some triage there. But at that point, you could combine that with the extra hop uh, events and say, hey, uh, Masonic Snipe, excuse me, uh, meant to say, uh, we could combine that with endpoint logs, right? Or a tool such as uh, uh, CrowdStrike. And that, that, and then there you could say, okay, well, I see that that event was, uh, uh, there was actually some suspicious traffic, some processes running on that endpoint. Uh, at that point, I wanna go ahead and move it into this playbook and let's let's go go through a response workflow. So that's just walking through how we could integrate with your existing SOC tools. Uh, Michael, do we have any questions at this point? I want to take a quick pause here. Nope, doesn't look like Not at this point, nope. Okay, great. So at that point, uh, I'm going to just move into, let's get into the demo, and at this, you know, hopefully that, that starts to uh, get your uh, gears turning in your mind, and you, you, you can uh, 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 ask questions at that point. So I will go ahead and uh, switch over to uh, another sharing here. All right, let's uh, move over to the demo part of it. Just uh, kind of reset the demo here real quick. Okay, so I will make this full screen at this point. Let's see. Okay, so at this point, you should be seeing um, uh, the our our platform, what we call um, uh, Iron Defense, right? So this is uh, the IronNet platform, and specifically what, what you're looking at here. I've logged in. And uh, this is what we call our detection correlation dashboard. Uh, you know, it, we, uh, some people also call it the Iron Dome, right? So this is really the, the broad macro level view. This is where you can see multiple participants involved in the traffic. But right now what I've done is I'm, I'm filtering, every, filtering everything right now. So if you think about this as there are different ways, you know, I, I can go through the left pane here and start uh, slicing and dicing the data however I want to kind of make sense of it all. So what I'd like to start with usually is here in this sort of what looks like a dandelion. And this is basically a view of your network. So this will be all the iron net visibility into your traffic, right? It could be logs or packets, right? Uh, and uh, your, your, uh, your company is labeled enterprise here. And then everything you see, think about all of these, um, you know, petals or these little circles that are on the end of long lines. Um, those are basically correlated alerts. So don't think about them just as an alert in your network. Think about those as alerts that are opportunities to correlate. In other words, every one of those has some things that, you know, some, some attributes to it that could be potentially linked to the same type of activity in another customer, right? Now, when I, what I've done here is I've actually taken what we call a community filter. So this is basically different iron domes uh, or, or different ways to slice and dice the iron dome. So you have views into different um, industry sectors. When you click enterprise, that's just basically showing you only your traffic. So anything that's in blue that you see here, this was basically a set of correlated alerts, right? It might have been, uh, you know, hundreds of events uh, and it could have been traffic that occurred uh, or any time within the timeline that's showed in the bottom of this of this screen, right? So um, you know, any, uh, there's basically one or more alerts that are uh, grouped together. And if it's in blue, that means it was not correlated with the dome. So basically this is an alert that was, is unknown. And as of yet, it hasn't been seen in another environment. It's just unique to your environment. And that may or may not have a rating that you have actually assigned. Anything that you see here in, um, you know, uh, basically that's rated malicious or yellow is suspicious. So those are the two ratings, right? A red exclamation mark malicious. Uh, yellow is suspicious, right? So those are two different uh, what we call event severities or rating severities. Those have been rated by you at very minimum, right? So that you have actually seen that and you were, uh, uh, 
you, you've had an analyst look at that and, and rate that into the system. So then it, it, it's uh, data that can then be optionally shared into the, uh, into the collective defense platform. It's important to note that everything that we send to the Iron Dome for sharing is fully anonymized. So it does not actually reveal anything about your company, right? We actually have a whole process where we take any specific domains, internal IP ranges, uh, even public IP ranges, all of this we have what we call anonymization list. Uh, that can be taken for every participant and then we can filter that data out or remove it and replace it with, uh, you know, uh, 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 essentially anonymized data. Therefore, it can be shared with other participants so that you see what's relevant from a collective defense standpoint. At the same time, you can get it past the lawyers where you're not sharing any, any, uh, anything proprietary or revealing uh, attribution from an attack on your specific network. So at this point, you know, think about this as a current state. I have all these alerts. There's a bunch, you know, this is probably a visual representation. It's very common of what you might have in your environment. Uh, dozens to potentially hundreds of correlated alerts per day. Now, if I start wanting to see what's going on, let's actually start adding some correlations here. So I want to go ahead and click on oil and gas, and I'm going to just kind of change the way that, you know, we have different views here, organic versus structural. It's just a way to basically reorient the data on your screen so you can actually, um, uh, you know, visualize it better. And what's interesting about this entire visualization is the data is actually loaded in, and, and, and when you when you change the settings, it's in real time. It's re uh, redrawing on in your browser, right, with kind of next generation web tools or, or modern web uh, web uh, uh, AP, uh, APIs to actually show this data. So what happens is immediately we see, okay, I've got all these events that just moved off to the side, and instead I'm starting to see different cust you know peers that are anonymized. I don't know what oil and gas company B would be, let me zoom in a little bit and kind of show that better, right? Uh, oil and gas company E echo, right? Or uh, oil and gas company A. These are all, I, I know that they're industry peers. I just don't know who they are. But I, what I do know is that there are some interesting things happening because I see an attack or a, uh, an alert actually. And again, this is, remember these petals are, each one of these little round circles were opportunities for correlation. In this case, when there's a line connected, that was a correlation that was made by our system. And we actually indicate, okay, on what, uh, what basis do we correlate? Well, this was behavioral, right? And so we'll kind of get into that uh, in a second. So if you look at what I'll actually do is do some filters here. So I'm going to go ahead and filter, uh, turn so off. Behavior. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think this is actually a good question to answer. Sorry to interrupt you, but um, no someone is asking how quickly the collective defense information is shared. Hey, great question. Absolutely. Um, so the, the answer is it can be shared in real time. Um, so if it, when uh, we actually, I'll, I'll move into the alerts view here in a second, or kind of the, an, the individual company analyst view. The answer is that uh, as soon as, so if something is rated as the, uh, you know, if we zoom in the uh, suspicious or malicious, uh, if that correlation is seen, uh, unless you specifically turn that off on an individual, individual environment, that is automatically shared by the Iron Dome. Right, so that it'll automatically make those connections. Um, the key would be like, for example, this is a good example. Here was a behavioral correlation, right? It's been, that was a, uh, that's the, the type of behavioral. And we saw it in both company B, E, and uh, your own company. So that was a three-way correlation that we saw that. And this is very typical. We actually have a monthly report that comes out or actually a weekly report called the Dome, uh, Dome Report. And uh, we, we see actually more correlations of activity between more, uh, multiple participants than just two, right? So um, that, that happened actually automatically. The correlation happened, we, we put it, push it out to each one of the participants. Your, op your option to actually triage, analyze, work, go through your standard workflow, that's done uh, after that correlation's come through. So that was a real-time share, right? As soon as the, the traffic's detected among uh, individual members. But then the, uh, from there, you can actually go in and interact and uh, analyze that alert. And if you wanna make, if you see here, there's actually a comment by company E. They uh, they said, okay, well, we we see this grand dash prize dash is here to dot life suspicious domain, right? They op did a lot of open source intelligence research. Uh, it doesn't look overtly mal malicious. Um, so there was a comment made, but they the that particular analyst just did not have enough to make a alert. So it did not change this to uh, yellow or red. So uh, Michael, I think that answers the question about the real time. Yep. Thank you. Right. No, thank you for 
um, interjecting. So uh, continuing on to this, one thing, let's, let's sort of separate this idea of, okay, what's, what are different correlation contexts, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just turn on IP and domain name. So when you, the way the behavior works for our, our checkboxes is when you enable those, it actually filters by that. And then anything that's not checked will be excluded. So uh, this is a good chance to really talk about, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, define how this might be a little bit different than your traditional threat intelligence platform, right? So uh, TIP platform, um, you know, there, there are co some next gen companies out there that do tailored threat intelligence, but in general, more commoditized or more general threat intelligence that's not open source that you pay for this is, is sent in as a feed that could be uh, integrated to you uh, through uh, an API or something like that, right? Maybe it's a JSON feed that's integrated with your environment. But traditionally what those are, are IP and domain name, right? So in this case, I saw uh, a correlation context was domain and minesweeper dash online dash game.info, right? That was seen uh, and it was suspicious. You see some ratings from an analyst, right? Um, and uh, that was uh, by, uh, you know, by your own company, you had somebody that put in a rating and then it was correlated with activity in oil and gas company A. Um, you know, that could be also from, uh, if you look here, uh, if I kind of go through these, there'll be other, uh, typically we correlate on IP, but then here, yeah, or domain name, but IP is another type of correlation. Again, another example of something very similar to what a threat intelligence platform. The difference is, is that um, here you have IronNet deployed on each one of these customers. So either logs or packets, we are running our analytics. Um, it came back with the command and control DNS tunneling alert. Severity is a thousand. So it's definitely something we, we saw as a very strong indicator of uh, malicious behavior going on. And then the context was that was this, we saw 103.248.69.3 tra traffic in two different environments, right? So that's, when you think about a traditional threat intelligence platform, that's what that looks like. If I turn those off, if I actually go back, show me behavioral. This is where things get a little bit more interesting, right? So if I were to click into here, right, here is a uh, alert that was correlated between both the enterprise and oil and gas company A. Um, and at this point, what's interesting is that th th there is no IP and domain that we actually link this together. This was actually based on one of our other type of alerts. So it didn't fall into, you know, from a kill chain standpoint, this was really just, there was a nature of the TLS traffic, right? And this is a great point to actually talk about. How do we handle uh, encrypted traffic, right? So the answer is we don't decrypt it by default in our, in our platform. Uh, if you are a large organization and you've deployed something like a intelligent tap, Gigamon, uh, you're using some sort of uh, security visibility tool where you are decrypting that traffic, that web traffic, and you send uh, the iron defense sensor a decrypted feed, then absolutely we will run additional analytics. But that is not necessary, right? Majority of our customers do not do that. And we still deliver analytics value because we're looking at things like, okay, what's the domain? What's the uh, SNI server, uh, server name indication, right? SNI of that TLS cert. Um, what's some, what's the nature of the encryption? Are they using, uh, S, you know, uh, SSL V3, for example, right? A little bit older, but all that we can actually still do analytics at the, uh, at a metadata level without necessarily seeing the, uh, the contents of that, that TLS session. But that was, um, you know, and then here you see this sort of large, long sort of alphanumeric, right? We only put that there because quite frankly, we just needed a unique identifier for that type of alert because this was not IP or domain. Right. This was a uh, correlation based on the same type of alert seen on different traffic. So what could happen in the real, you know, as as many of you know, um, the advanced adversaries, they change their tool ta tools, tactics and procedures on a regular basis. Uh, so they may change their infrastructure. Right. They, they may have a botnet. Their domain gets taken down. Right. Uh, very regular basis. But then what they'll do is very, uh, very often it's a lot harder for them to completely change their entire uh, attack workflow and change all their tools. So the behavior will be, will be the same on the wire, but um, you'll see that, that they may change the uh, infrastructure they're hosting on, right? And so that's why behavioral analytics are very, very important in this concept of collective defense where you're, you're getting beyond just traditional IOCs, all right? So uh, at this point, it's a good chance to sort of introduce what happens if I'm able to, you know, am I only able to see my, my own sector? And the answer is no. Um, we have basically what we call a dome sharing agreement with each one of our participants that allows them to opt into um, those industries where, where they agree to participate. So a uh, very good example. So, you know, Richard and I both cover critical infrastructure. So primarily that includes uh, energy, 
uh, and in ironet speak that really means the power utilities right so power generation distribution companies uh, and oil and gas right so i can show both of those types of uh, uh, in a, uh, of, of industries and i want to just sort of change the uh, correlation here and i'll go back to this and then you'll see now okay i have now energy companies correlated with oil and gas. So I can start to see, okay, do I, I have here an attack between oil and gas or some sort of suspicious traffic uh, and correlated with the entities, right? So this is with enterprise, uh, but it could also be between the energy company and oil and gas company D. So you see that, and, and this is a good time to actually really talk about our comments, right? So if you wanted to, you can actually then filter those uh, alerts that only have comments. So uh, many of our customers do just this because they may want, you know, if you think about yourself as a SOC analyst, or if you're running a team, you're a CISO, and you have a set of analysts, you are now leveraging um, the capabilities of analysts in other companies in your same industry sector or adjacent industries, right? So you think about now I can actually see human driven, you know, workflow uh, combined with this uh, concept of machine learning, right, uh, automated alerts, right? So you re we really think that cyber defense has to, the future of cyber defense is going to be a combination of both, right? You can't trust automated analytics 100%. There's always going to be a um, factor of, of, of false positive, uh, false positives, right? Because at the end of the day, this, these are algorithms that are running. And you re it's really a statistical analysis, right? Uh, when you combine that with, you know, actual collaborative information sharing that, okay, I had somebody in energy company D that did some D research and they put their, you know, it, our notes here are really example data, but we have a lot of customers that get into this level of detail. Hey, we looked in our, they might say, we looked in our endpoint data and we saw that this is definitely malicious and they share that rating. That's immediately shared with every other participant in the network. And um, I'm able to, you're able to filter by those that only have comments. So you can kind of really focus your alert work, uh, your workflow and your, your triage only on those alerts that uh, are likely to be something that are worth investigating, worth investigating first. And maybe everything else that doesn't get correlated, uh, you start to automate that with the SOAR tools and you close those out. You can see that, hey, uh, I can compare that. IronNet saw this, but my uh, Zscaler um, web, web uh, proxy and my Zscaler uh, cloud security service blocked that this, this particular alert. So uh, this particular um, action. So there was nothing really that happened from that. You can close that out immediately in your solar tool. So uh, then you're focusing all your actual human um, analyst time on, on those alerts that are correlated. Michael, at this point, any questions that I've missed? Kind of making sure I monitor the Q&A. No, sir, not yet. Okay, great. All right, so at this time, uh, it's, it's very, uh, you know, at this, it can kind of like really start to explore things in a little bit different ways, right? So one of the things I, I like to go from here is let's turn off the filter for comments and uh, let's kind of turn on all the domes here. But what, what I do want to do is s group this data in a way that's going to be a little bit easier to, um, you know, uh, to really, uh, uh, you know, understand what's going on. So if I want to actually do that, I can do a, a combined by, right? So I want to actually see, show me the um, alerts by category, right? So what happens there is now I'm seeing really all the domes that I have visibility to, right? Anonymized data still, but I can now start to see that, okay, out of this, I saw, you know, 25 alerts that were related to command and control, right? And they zoom in, it sort of blows that out, right? But if I want to go back to there, I can zoom back out. Uh, but if I want to look into access, Here's all the alerts related to that, right? And you know, maybe things might look a little easier if I were to turn, I could just turn off a few industries. I wanna see my, maybe I'm a banking company. So I'm, I'm part of the finance, uh, you know, uh, dome. So then you can start to see, okay, here are the alerts that were based, based on this particular phase of the kill chain, right? Uh, and if I go back to the graph controls uh, combined by category, maybe I wanna see, show me everything by correlation type, right? So at this point, and then, you know, I did do a filter. So let's turn on IP and domain, right? So now you can kind of get a sense from a macro level, what, what's going on right here. I have everything that's IP based, everything is uh, domain based, but here in this, in this demo data, right? These are 86 different correlated groups of alerts that were uh, related to, um, you know, uh, behavior. And again, if you remember everything, every one of those has a unique uh, signature or basically just a, uh, what we could basically a machine generated name to it. And that's because it can't be grouped by IP or domain. Those may be multiple IPs, uh, multiple domains involved in each one of these alerts. This is just our first pass at how to display that data. Um, you know, we, we welcome customer feedback on how 
we might want to show this. Maybe we want, you know, create an identifier that that talks about the alert type in the future. But as of now, we just chose to create something that's just a machine generated unique uh, identifier. Right. So, you know, we we discussed how you could actually group things by, uh, you know, uh, different uh, correlation types. I can also uh, look at more than just a ca the category of the alert, right? So the kill chain, right? So I want to just show me everything that's IP and domain related, uh, but I want to see, okay, where, what type of alert did we have here? So you'll see that, okay, there's a lot of DNS tunneling activity. There was some domain uh, generation algorithm activity, right? Uh, TLS, uh, a domain analysis by TLS. So looking for suspicious uh, metadata around uh, encrypted traffic. So those, there are a lot of ways to actually slice and dice the data. Um, at this point, I actually, let's kind of go back to the non-grouped view. So I'll say no, and uh, let's change the type in this. Let's kind of group this together. And then let's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put in finance and enterprise in this example. But at this point, um, it's, it's worth mentioning that this particular dashboard that we have is, uh, it's really a view of, 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 of all the data over a selected timeline. So towards the bottom of the screen, up until now, I haven't really change anything here. But if I were to actually slowly drag this back here, you'll kind of see as the data moves in, in our sample and uh, data, we have just a fixed set of uh, traffic in this dashboard. But in a real deployment, you will have a continuous stream of traffic. And then, you know, eventually over time, as you have more participants, that those amount of alerts will increase. So if I actually draw this to the right, you can kind of see gradually, right, if I go to slow enough, that um, it, the, the, the dashboard starts drawing in data as it becomes available. So you can actually zoom in a little bit and say, okay, I want to see, um, show me behavioral uh, alerts. And I actually want to see only those alerts that are related to uh, command and control activity, right? So you can kind of really start to, this is where you can build that story over, okay, well, I first saw some C C2 activity in my environment, but as time started to go, you know, goes forward, I see the same alert starting, you know, the same type of activity, the same behavior starting to fire in multiple industries, right? And so from this, you really, and, and this can be a dashboard that's uh, displayed in your SOC. You could play it, replay it on a regular basis. So you really get a sense of the attack timeline. And most importantly, you start to see other, you know, participation from other participants and see how, you know, the traffic's, uh, how, how the attacks are are uh, landing in, the, in those environments. So over time, you could really build, build that timeline story. Okay. So it doesn't look like we have any other questions at this point. So I'm gonna kind of pivot now into a completely different type of view. So uh, anytime you see, for example, um, you know, if I go into here, this was a correlated alert. It was, it's rated, it's blue. So both companies D, B in the finance sector. And in this example, I'm now a bank, right? Uh, I see this alert was rated as 951 or the iron nets, uh, the automated system is, is, is assigned a severity score of 951, uh, but it's not been triaged by any of the other uh, members. So you, if you click view alerts, then that will pivot you into um, the actual alert level data. So that's a good chance to actually swing over to our different view. So some of you that have seen iron net demos, this is actually our more traditional view. Uh, up until now, it was, it was uh, harder for us to explain the collective defense story. The last, uh, looks like we actually have a question. Yep, just popped up. Yeah, great. So let's let's address that question right now since we just transitioned. So uh, how, <clears throat> how much community involvement is currently available to augment the security fees? So I, I think that's kind of around a lot of your uh, collective defense depends on community involvement. So how many people, is there a way to give numbers on who's opting in and actually being active? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we have, uh, you know, several, uh, you know, we have basically customers in the dozens, right? Um, now, uh, actually, what I can I, what can do is let me just, it's a great chance to just pivot out. This is what I love, just being able to get sort of, you know, on the fly, let's answer some questions. What I can show you is, this is from a little bit older this year, but uh, maybe as a follow-up, we'll be happy to share it to everybody on this webinar through Set Solutions, uh, the latest Iron Dome report. So what we do have is actual, here's the real data, right? What you see previously is a demo, but this is from uh, a couple of months ago. But we basically, what we show is sort of aggregated totals without necessarily showing uh, customer counts, right? Um, but it's, we had in aggregate, we looked at about 417 billion traffic flows. So that could be logs and packet data, right? Right. Currently, it's primarily packet level data. Uh, out of that, we saw 1.4 million raw alerts, right? And then um, the expert system, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second and dive in a little bit. 
that expert system then um, uh, you know triage that down automatically automatically triage that down to about 4,000 3975 high severity alerts out of that those were you know so these would have been the these would have been alerts in each customer environment you saw in the previous screen those would have been the blue petals right the little blue um, round circles attached to the stocks they but they are not they were not lines connecting to another participant but out of that we actually saw 2700 that were correlated with more than one participant. So at least uh, two companies saw the activity in the network. And what's really interesting, and we see this consistently now with multiple reports, week in and week out, you actually see a lot more correlations between multiple participants than, than indiv two individual participants. And that's, you know, it's actually, uh, it makes sense if you think about it, because the majority of what we see is tends to be malware, ad campaigns, uh, you know, a non, uh, not spear phishing or more broad based phishing attacks, right, phishing campaigns. And we tend to see that with, you know, multiple participants. Uh, what's interesting is, you know, if you only have a correlated alert between two participants, that may be actually something to look at more closely. Is that more of a targeted nation state type actor um, trying to just target, you know, two companies to start with and then broaden their attack into uh, more than one, more than two in, in an industry? So uh, the answer is, yeah, we, we have some uh, correlated high level stats as to actual traffic. Hopefully this did answer your question on that. Appreciate that. No, no problem. So let me flip back into the demo. Let's go uh, full screen here. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is really, let, let's dive into what, what is the, the network traffic analytics part of uh, Iron Dome, uh, Iron Defense look like, right? So at this point, let me, uh, let me sort of hide this little meeting controls. Okay. So uh, so our, our, the way this view works on the left side, and, and this, this is very much the hunter level screen, right? The previous dashboard, uh, we see that as a tool at, for just for the hunter to start his activity in the day, right? Kind of get a sense of what's going on, anything that fired overnight, right? What's what's uh, and then their morning coffee, and then jumping in uh, from you know from working from home typically, right? That's how they would jump into this. Here, this view is your daily, your actual triage part of the workflow. Um, I will also say that as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Everything that you see here, uh, basically 89% of it, most of the actions can actually be done, for example, in our Splunk integration, which is a two-way two integration. So we can actually escalate alerts from the system and we can filter those. You don't have to send the raw um, log data, raw IronNet logs uh, from our system into Splunk, uh, thereby you know, dramatically uh, exceeding your license capacity, for example. You can use this as a early warning or, or advanced warning system and then send the data into your Splunk to then only work on alerts, for example, that were rated between 700 and 1,000, right? And then you could still do everything that you see here of the, for the vast majority of the actions I'm going to show you. Uh, you can then take, you can do those within the Splunk app that we have on the, the Splunk base uh, app store. So I'll just kind of go through here. And on the left side, we have filter panes, right? Filter checkboxes. So I can, I want to actually just show me everything that was, that's awaiting review. So this is my current to-do list, right? And uh, this, this could be through a SIM, this could be in a SOAR tool, or some, a lot of our customers still use uh, the, this particular interface as well. And uh, this particular one I see, okay, this is just, it's uh, a, a, a domain analysis HDP, right? So this was one event that generated, generated one alert. So at least we will see one to one, but more typically we see, for example, this is a great example that you saw 135 events. And I know it might be a little difficult to see on your screen here, but if you go under communities, this was one that was correlated. So this would have been a uh, alert that in, in the previous view, in the dashboard level view, you would have seen uh, at least uh, one level, you know, one line uh, connecting to somebody else in addition to your own company, right? And so here there was 135 events uh, in the in kind of the right in the most part of your screen here. This is the actual, the, the, the alert view, right? So this is specific to this alert. All of those events are listed. On uh, each one of those, you can really dig into the event. But at the top, we, let's, let's break down the macro level view, right? Um, at a glance, there's 135 events. What was the source of the data? It was our network tap. Uh, if that was log data, then that we would identify that differently here. Uh, eventually, as we uh, expand it and really add our cloud capabilities uh, a little bit later this year in, in our product uh, roadmap, uh, you know, it will, we will even have cloud sensors as, as event data sources to, to look at some of the uh, common use cases around cloud logs, right? And then we saw this particular alert in the um, finance, energy, oil and gas enterprise. So this was a very broadly correlated alert. Um, the alert aggregation criteria, here's, here's what from a um, you know, network traffic analysis standpoint, 
we 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 honed in on this techsoft.pro. So this was command. This is potentially beaconing activity occurring over HTTP uh, to this particular outside domain or app, app domain, right? So if I actually go through here and say view full event, um, then we now you start to see okay, this was raw pack pcat that generated this. The metadata was where we were doing the analysis, but it's very easy to see immediately. We see this classic, uh, very regular beaconing. Um, this, you know, we still see this occasionally. You start to see, uh, you know, this could be either, um, it, you know, if you were doing this, nothing, if you were kind of stepping back, if you're doing this type of analysis and just in Splunk, um, right, you, you could probably get the same type of graph, right? But you're just, you're just doing analysis on regular HTTP traffic, maybe from web proxy logs. Um, now, where things start to get interesting is how do I now really dig into this and make sure this is not just somebody's phone, iPhone that was uh, beaconing out because it's actually a legitimate application uh, that just has a regular heartbeat on the network, or maybe this is a server in your test dev environment, right? Uh, there you have some cloud service that you have regular beaconing from. So that's where you start to dig into what we call the full event context, right? And then this is now where we start really breaking this down and feeding this data into what we call the expert system. And so very often you saw that, you know, as we saw originally, this is a thousand rating on this uh, alert. Um, I'm going to flip over to the expert system impact. And this is where um, I really, you know, anytime you're looking, you know, we're not that we recognize we are not the only network traffic analytics tool out there. Uh, we are not the only platform out there that does machine learning, but it's really important to understand and make sure that this is not a black box, right? Uh, we do have, you know, algorithms that are proprietary running on that, but they're all based on data analytics. And what we try to do is really open up the kimono, so to speak, uh, and show you why something was scored the way it was. So in this case, we have really just an internal rule identifier. The name of this, um, what, what was the result of that rule, right? What fired? Was it true or false? And then, you know, how did that impact the score? So in this case, uh, and I'll actually zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, let's get in a little bit bigger. So uh, there was a baseline severity just based on this traffic of 520. And that would have been really the raw uh, machine learning algorithm, the raw analytic that we have around C2 beaconing. That, that fired because it detected regular traffic, right? Very regular, a heartbeat type, or, you know, kind of a, a comb, lo, lo, it looks like a comb when drawn in a graph. Now we compare that against, this is where our um, event enrichment comes in, what we call Cloud Connect at the very beginning, I showed you Cloud Connect, right? This is, big, this is that enrichment we go in there. So we say, okay, that domain was blacklisted. So that immediately puts this, you know, increases the score from 520 to another 320, right? And then furthermore, um, this is where the data science aspect gets into there. And, and uh, this, these are things that you could do in your Splunk uh, workflow, but you would have to automate these and do multiple very complex Splunk queries for every type of these analysis, right? And so that's where the automation aspect really comes into play is that how, how can you really cast a wide net and let the machines generate some alerts, you know, generate those needles out of the haystack. And then I just need to make sure, uh, you know, the idea here, think about, you know, the human driven aspect of this, instead of looking for the needles in the haystack, now I can actually pull the needles out, put them into a little bucket and actually decide which one of these is, is sharp, which one of them is, is really dangerous, right? So, um, you know, then the, the last aspect of this, what we mean by small SLD domain COI, right? That's, there's some machine, um, there's really some data to scientists speak in there, but uh, what that means is the second level domain here, right? So the, uh, you know, the summary of this traffic, right? Once again, if you go kind of look at the, the, the information to this traffic, right, techsoft.pro. This particular uh, domain was not seen in your own environment. So uh, from your enterprise level view, right, it was a pretty uncommon second level domain, right? And, uh, and so community of interest is what that means. So second level domains, community of interest. When you see that this is not that common in your environment, yet it's a blacklisted domain, it's definitely something that's worth further triage, right? And that's where uh, that alert was really raised into the system. And then it was actually um, drawn, sent into the, uh, the Iron Dome, right? And you can see that here. So this, by default, we go to the overview pane, but if you go into uh, Iron Dome, this is just another view, uh, kind of a snippet of what you saw at the beginning, the, the graph level view, the dome level uh, dashboard. I can really start to dig into this and say, okay, here was a, uh, uh, you know, this was seen in my environment, April 16th, but, I just saw this again in another participant in the dome on June 20th, right? And it was rated by that participant as suspicious, right? And um, uh, notice that the traffic for that participant was seen the 20th and ended uh, because basically, you know, uh, it was last year, but it was uh, 2019 uh, from June to August in this example data. 
Hey, right, and it's not, we're, uh, we're hitting 10 yeah. minutes. I'm sorry. I don't want to, I just want to give time for some questions because we do, do have like three or four coming in. So. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. That's actually best. So, I'm, you know, that's, that's the best part when I can actually jump into this. So let's, let's jump into that and let's address those questions. Mike. Okay. So I've got, there's four on here. Um, there's three on here and I've got one offline too that I want to ask as well. So um, I want to ask specifically the one that came to us offline first. Um, yep. So the, the, I guess it's more of a question or a comment that appears as best uh, suited. This is best suited for like a traditional sock. Mm -hmm. um, they um, are wondering if they, since they, they don't have as many resources, they think they might be challenged um, to do triage and analysis and that kind of stuff. Can you answer that objection? Yeah, great, great uh, point. Um, uh, so that we actually do hear that a lot from some sub subnet of our customer, sub, from some segment of our customers. So uh, the, the short answer to that, Michael, is that we actually have a, uh, we have multiple offerings. We have three tiers uh, and I, and actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, it might've been worth sharing on the, the slide, but we, we kept this primarily technical, but uh, there is a lower tier offering we call IronNet Essentials, where you can actually forward us your log traffic, even if you don't, and we, it's even designed for some customers who don't really have a, a, a SIM and don't have active hunters. What that offering does is it's coming in a much lower cost level, but it allows you to just send us log traffic. We run the analytics on that. It's a soft, it's software as a service. So just for a monthly fee, what we will do is we basically, um, I'll actually kind of bring it back to a, a dashboard here. So what we will do in there is that we're not providing you the access to this UI. Uh, you know, you're not, you're not going to get the, uh, you know, any of the login capability because, but because we're able to make it lighter weight, what you can actually do is, um, let me just filter down and quickly get the question answered. So what we're going to do is if you're, for example, you're an energy company or a utility company, we will send you on a daily basis only those alerts where we correlated traffic in your environment with some other participant in the Iron Dome, whether it's logs or other or traffic based analytics. Even if we're taking network traffic from one customer, we're taking logs from another customer. It's very possible we can uh, get basically nine of our analytics. Uh, can run on logs, right, only. And then there's still ability to actually detect that, oh, there was traffic to Google dash an A TLCS is clearly something suspicious here, right? So we will then, in, in the example, we would then send you an alert on a daily basis where you can log into just a traditional kind of, uh, basically a customer ticket portal. And then you will see details of the traffic in your environment. So the, the shorter answer is absolutely, we have an offering for those customers that don't have a traditional SOC. Awesome, thank you. Um, next question, can you speak to IronNet's hunt support and how they utilize this view in their workflow? Yeah, actually, yeah, let, me, let me address that at a high level. Uh, so we, uh, as part of our uh, higher tier offering, especially our highest tier offering is enterprise grade. Uh, so that's actually most of our customers currently. Um, what happens with that is that we actually um, have hunt support included on a regular basis, typically weekly, uh, as part of the offering and service that you purchase from IronNet. We will have our own hunters. Uh, typically, these are DOD, three-letter agency type background individuals that will um, go through your traffic on a regular basis and triage those alerts depending on, and there's, there's definitely some uh, adjustment, you know, how we, we, we work with your group, but we can basically do, um, it, you know, I would not call it a managed service, but it's really just hunt support delivered to get you better value for the, 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 the you know, traffic in your environment. And so they can go through and, um, um, you know, hunt for the data uh, and we, we will our hunters will send that we'll work with your um, security analysts and say hey we saw this traffic here's my you know our actual hunter will go through and uh, perform that analytics walk through that workflow and then they will um, they'll actually send that to you uh, you know work with you in, in real time basis and say here's how we found it to help you really understand how we use the tool so that you could try to do the same thing for other types of alerts in your environment so awesome. hopefully that answered the question I would say, Michael, we also, um, if, if you're interested, we can definitely, uh, maybe we'll try to share a video that kind of shows how the, so our SOC analysts use it, but uh, we'd love to broker, con you know, contacts at Solutions, and we will talk to you with a detailed meeting and bring our analysts right on the line and, and talk about how we deliver the service. Yeah, great. Um, yeah. Uh, the next one is going to have some connections to that last question, but they're asking, can we freeform hunt for threats in our environment with this platform? Yeah, the short answer is absolutely. Yeah, so it's, 
it, what we find is most common, and this is a alert-driven workflow. But if you actually, um, you know, if you if you had, uh, because we are it, it, when you're doing, you know, the answer is that question is yes, it depends. Um, if you are doing full PCAP, uh, we can actually go in and drill into the full PCAP data. So let me see if I can. I mean, you kind of saw it earlier in the the other view, but uh, let's see if this one. Some of our demo data has a lot of data there. Let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, but there is ability to do free form hunt uh, in this uh, data. So one of the things I can do is let's let's just uh, reset this, and I can actually say, okay, if show me everything, I want to see all the uh, TLS traffic that has, you know, that was basically, you know, where the SNI field was populated, right? And I'll actually put this as regex. So. So here, I did this, this kind of a free form hunt, very high level, right? Not not necessarily a very specific search, but this is all the uh, data in our in our in our you know in this example environment. Yeah, you could do free form hunt, uh, look at the full network sessions, right? And start to get into packet carving, right? And if there's file that came out of there, we can pull that out. Uh, obviously, if it's encrypted traffic, you're only going to see ciphertext. But uh, you know, one of the free forms you could do is look at alerts that fired over port 80. You still see traditional attacks out there where the attackers are just using less sophisticated uh, TTPs and they're going over clear text. And so um, we actually had a customer POV last year where we saw a user, um, and this, was, this wasn't a uh, freeform uh, hunt, but it was, it was an example of full PCAP where the, uh, we, we saw an alert fire for credentials where a traditional business user had logged into an oil and gas uh, website and that their, the website was misconfigured to allow logins over port 80 unencrypted. And so we saw a username and password format in the clear that looked very similar to their enterprise uh, AD credentials. So basically the user did what a lot of users do uh, against best practices. They use the same enterprise security credentials. I mean, they use their same AD credentials for their own public website that was like an industry news website. So we did see that in the customer environment. Hopefully that answered the question of freeform hunt. Yeah, you can do it if you do PK. Right. All right. And uh, last question we've got on here. Can you describe how the intelligence sharing with IronNet uh, products is different from something like a next-gen firewall where devices connect to a subscription service that is augmented indirectly by other customers? IronNet seems more direct, but what other benefits are there besides sorting by verticals? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. So, um, you know, one of the things we're, we're uh, and that's a great point. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely this, this, there is a little bit of, okay, where is some overlap with the next gen firewall? But one thing that's interesting is you can actually send your firewall logs to us, especially the raw logs. Um, so, you could send your, uh, if you're using firewall enabled with like, you know, ed web proxy modes doing HTTP, uh, if you got DNS logs and even things like web uh, or like DHCP logs, you could send those to us. And I would say that we can actually augment, um, it's really a defense in depth approach. You can actually see alternative view of data from the raw traffic beyond the, the, the kind of focused alerts that the firewall vendor is getting from their customer environment where they're they're really looking at more broader level uh, correlation. They're not, they're totally de-anonymizing, right? So I would say that's a very broad collective uh, defense kind of aspect. Here is you get more, much more information about, okay, can I get into specific industry verticals? Another way that besides just the, the, the vertical based uh, deployment is we are also starting to work with the uh, groups like the ISACs, right? The various uh, intelligence sharing and analysis centers. Um, we are trying to work with them to actually deploy this in a, uh, you still have the same dome infrastructure, but we can actually carve out through data label labeling and tagging. We actually have de-anonymized. Maybe the, within the iron, uh, the, I, the ISAC, they may have a circle of trust where they want to see that it's a different participant and they're working together. Uh, and they want to know which company it is. So the, it is certainly possible with our platform and it will require some work, but um, we can actually set this up for a different view for that type of uh, customer where they can actually share in a non-anonymized manner. So that I would I would give that as an example of something more than just a traditional dome dashboard that you just saw there. Great. Yeah. So I know we got a minute left. Any yeah. questions? Uh, we don't have any more on the screen. I wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to say to tie this all up and then we can uh, let everybody go and get on with the rest of their day and get into their start, maybe their July 4th holiday. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining. I mean, I, I think I'll just wrap it up at this point and say that, um, you know, we're, our, 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 our mission is collective defense first and foremost. So uh, if you are interested in this topic, you'd like to understand more how this integrates in, could in, integrate in your environment, uh, we'd love to have a conversation. Just reach out to Set Solutions. Uh, they will be following up with some information um, uh, about this meeting, including uh, recording, I believe, um, 
after they've uh, gone through and um, kind of uh, validated it, uh, you have the ability to share this with some of your peers in your company and organization. Uh, and and uh, if that if there's a uh, if there's interest, we'd love to talk further. Thank you. Thanks, Vasant. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to you, Richard, Phil, all for getting on uh, to to Vasant's point. Vasant's point. Yes, we. Um, We'll be putting this up on uh, our YouTube channel later and sharing this out for anybody to look at. So uh, yeah, you can definitely feel free to share this out. Again, the survey will be coming out to everyone at the end of this. And uh, please, if you can answer that survey and you will be put into a drawing to get another gift card. And also if you did not receive your gift card for this, please reach out to Lauren. Um, so thank you everybody for joining and have a uh, good July 4th holiday and uh, talk to you on the next Tech Thursday. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you.